and you're welcome back. There's so much coming up on the show today. First, a big thank you to the sports team for taking us around the world of sports in uh, just about 20 minutes. So we've got uh, quite a bit more to do today. We're having that all-important conversation. You know, the president has in times past been criticized for having a large government, especially the number of ministers uh, in his administration. Uh, his critics have asked that he save the public purse by cutting down the size of his appointees. So today we're going to assess uh, the, 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 the range of ministers and appointees that the president has put in place and ask ourselves, does the president still need 110 ministers? We'll be speaking to a political analyst, Joe Jackson. Uh, we'll be joined by Dr. Ali Dusedu by the magic of television. Uh, he's at the University of Ghana. And of course, Dr. Kojo Pumpuni Asante of the Center for Democratic Development will be here in the studio with us. We're going to hear from you as well, our cherished viewers, on this all-important subject. Don't go anywhere. We're dealing with that next. Also on the show, today we're going to delve into the issue of partisan politics in basic schools, following the punishment meted out to the head teacher of Timpani SHS. We're going to hear from the PRO of the Education Ministry, uh, Vincent Eko Asifwa, uh, because, of course, what has happened is not the first time, is it? We need to understand uh, what role politics has to play in basic education. We'll also be live from Moshizongo in Kumasi, where the police there are rejecting claims that a suspect died in their custody. Uh, we're going to wrap up the show with some showbiz news brought to you by Awake Purified Water. That's all to come. Becky is uh, in the building, so uh, stand by for her. Right, packed show, right? Which means we might as well get started now. Now, although the ILO has had a convention uh, since 1935 prohibiting the employment of women in underground mining, many countries which initially ratified it have since denounced it. Ghana is one of such nations which has allowed women into its underground mining operations. Some women have taken advantage of the situation and gone into this classic male-dominated area, uh, being sunk several feet into the belly of the earth, working as leaders of their shifts in the core mining operations at Golden Star Resources. Uh, let's look at some excerpts of the Joy News documentary, No Barriers, by Kweku Owusu Pepra, on women in non-traditional professions. Here's a, a little clip from part one, which aired yesterday. To the World Economic Forum, it will take 118 years for women to have the same career prospects as men. No country in the world has closed its gender gap. Even as female leaders steer multinationals and major economies, the reality is a working world which still excludes, underpays, overlooks and exploits half of its available talent. Women have increasingly become more involved in the workforce following World War II. Paid employment of women has shifted from primarily traditional female-oriented jobs, like being a nurse, teaching or offering catering services, to more non-traditional and previously male-oriented careers like engineering, mining, construction, among others. In some cases, occupations have already been labeled as a male or female oriented, and strong forces act to keep those gender assignments, with the underlying thought that it's still a man's world. However, the landscape is gradually changing as more and more women are choosing career paths that have been dominated by men for a long time. Gifty Aframa Gandhi is one of such women. She is a mining engineer here at the Pristia underground mines of Golden Star Resources. I had that passion to work at a male-dominated environment. So from Obuasi, after my completing my JHS, yeah, from a St. Joseph GSS of Boise, I went to Ifia Kobe Secondary School where I had science because that's the only way I can venture into engineering. But then at that time I hadn't decided to go into mining engineering because I didn't know there was a course like mining engineering. But I wanted to be an engineer. 
So when I completed school, I visited um, someone who was a senior at SS, and she was at UMA doing mining engineering. I said, oh, do you have that course? Then I'll venture. Working in the mining industry is quite a challenging choice and requires stamina and passion to be successful. This is something Gifty knew about right at the beginning of her career. She's currently a shift boss in the mines. Gifty leads a crew of 20 men who are sunk almost a kilometer deep into the belly of the earth to mine gold. If people are working there and they are not dead, I can go and work there. So I was I wanted to see how the place is. So on my first day underground, it was an escape route, which you have to walk through a route. Just why it was very difficult. My first tax underground wasn't easy. But with that one, I was so When I realized we took the cage, we went, everything was normal. I was like, I was just climbing the ladders and everything was normal. But it's because I was determined to do it. Mining is recognized as being one of the most male-dominated industries in the world. A recent study from Women in Mining UK and PricewaterhouseCoopers suggested that women make up just 10% of the global mining workforce and 5% of board positions in the top 500 globally listed mining companies. The situation is not very different at the Pristia underground mines. There are only two women who work here in the core underground operations. Gifty and Ernestina. I came to Golden Star in 2013 as a graduate trainee. So since 2013 to date, I was practicing my ventilation field. So currently I'm a ventilation as a ventilation engineer at Golden Star as a stand. And Estina and her crew have a difficult job of ensuring that the quality of air in the underground operation is safe. That's my job, to monitor the quantity. If we talk about the quantity, we talk about the volume of air ascending underground. And then we are governed by the airline, so we don't just go underground and pick any values at all. We have our airline, that's the legislative instrument, 2182, that governs us on the quantity to measure the quantity of air per each equipment per an individual. And then afterwards, we move to the quality of air. We study the quality of air. We look at the gases in the air. We look at the water in the air. We look at the dust, the smoke in the air. Although the International Labour Organization, ILO, has had a convention in place since 1935 prohibiting the employment of women in underground mining work, many countries that initially ratified it have since denounced the convention. Like Ghana, many other countries are signatories to the new ILO's Convention 176, which covers the rights of all workers regardless of their gender.